Today on Off the Clock, we're going to revisit the issue of employees working from multiple states. Notice I did not say organizations with locations in multiple states, because wherever you have an employee, you need to pay attention to the laws where those people are. And we're going to have some fun today talking about some different state and local laws that you might not have known about. Welcome to Off the Clock, the webcast of employment attorneys at Miller Johnson, where we discuss what is happening in the HR world and provide practical insight and advice. Some of our listeners might know that we publish a bi-weekly update of yeah. developments in every state in the country. It's yes. called the, NAD, the now National Employment Law Center. And every time I get that, I, of course, read it every two weeks. And <laughs> of course you It do. goes through each of the state <laughs> in a very concise, reader-friendly matter. Every time I get it, I chuckle to myself about some new law in the state, <laughs> right? And I think, oh my gosh, how are... <laughs> HR professionals supposed to keep track of and comply with all of this. And the reason it came to my mind is whenever I have a separation agreement, a tr an employee termination, yeah, right. uh, whatever, an employee agreement, a non-compete, whatever it is. Policy review. I have, <laughs> right. I have a, certainly a handbook project. Yeah, right. I have started, this was a hard muscle to build, right. but I have started asking every time, where is, this where is well, the employee? Even for my Michigan-only client, you just don't know who's working remotely, yeah. right, right, from a different location. Yeah. And what I have noticed over the past few weeks or months is a lot of times the person I'm talking to does not know the answer, which means it was not top of mind, right? right. It, was, they were, it was not top of mind that it mattered yeah. uh, or could matter what state the person was in. Right. And so that got me to thinking, you know what? I think it's time for us to talk about this again. Because it matters. It really, really does. We're going to talk about in, in a kind of a silly way in some points, but also in a serious way, some why examples. it matters. Yes, right. some examples. Okay. The, the laundry list of ways states can differ are, are too long to cover yeah. on good, the show. Good news. We're not going to talk about every state requirement in all 50 <laughs> states today. Oh, I really wanted in to talk. In 30 minutes or less. I wanted to talk for 80 hours. <laughs> yeah. Right. I wanted to hold you captive right. here for 80 hours and go right. through all 50 states. Yes, I've got charts for certain categories of things. <laughs> We're going to talk, for instance, about paid leave. That's going to be a category we're going to go through okay. and give lots of examples. And we're going to talk about lots of examples with asking for wage backgrounds yeah. because that's a big, or wage history, I should say, that's yeah. a big uh, topic right now where there's lots of differences mm -hmm. uh, amongst the states. Uh, but when I went to print <laughs> both of those charts at home using my own ink, so that's important, uh, each one was two to 300 pages. So that, get, and those are just on single topics. Yeah. So, so if someone wow. were to ask me, what do we really need to be sensitive about with employees uh, working in different states? I would say anything you might have a question about, <laughs> anything you might call to ask, can I do this? Can I do that? You, it might be different state by state. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime there's a signed agreement, any termination decision, any wage and hour yeah. issues, right? Drug testing is a big one. Um, job applications, pretty much the life cycle. If yeah. you think about everything HR departments do in the life cycle of an employee, yeah, everything can be different in different Absolutely. states. Protected right? classes, et cetera. Everything. And I will say too, this is a, a new, mm, it's a new world mm -hmm. because we've seen such an increase in regulatory activity yep. within states yep. versus on a federal level. So um, for our listeners who are thinking, oh my gosh, what, what has changed? It's both the fact that we have people working in lots of different places now, right? Combined yeah. with truly, it, you're not crazy. There, there has been a, a tremendous increase in state-by-state state legal yes. development. And I think, okay, so now we're going off to Nerdville for just okay. a moment. Why is that? Uh, I think one reason is the partisanship yeah. and the divide. So when states don't like what D.C. is doing, they, 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 do, do they will thing. just do their own thing. Right. They no longer will, you know, sit back. There is a very, uh, that whole, that we've talked about the us versus them type right. of thing. And it's kind of like, I'll show you. 
right. kind of thing. Also, again, little trip to Nerdville. This is more the trip to Nerdville. Uh, if there's federal laws on some of these topics, and there are not federal laws on all of these topics, right. but there are on some. So why are we still saying, but you need to know your That's, state? Oh, gosh. That you have is to comply be, with both. You have to comply with both. Right. There is, for those of you that remember civics class, whatever grade that was in, there is the supremacy clause, which says that federal law should control over state law. But in almost every relevant law we're talking about, right. there's an out. Yeah. And the federal law says states can be more generous to employees or more protective of employees. Yeah. Right. The federal law provides the lowest kind of common denominator but they almost always then say states can do something absolutely more employer friendly. It's always more employer friendly, right? If they wish, yep, right. And then employees take them up on that offer. You got it. So that's how we get right the plethora of state rules, and there's more. I sound like an infomercial, <laughs> but wait, there's more. In addition to the different states. We have a lot of local municipalities yes. passing their own rules on things. Oh, my gosh. Right? How about the city of Chicago? Yeah. <laughs> They're in it deep. Listeners, does anybody have anybody in Chicago? I hope you know yeah. what's happening there and what the rules are there. Exactly. We're, we're probably going to talk a little bit about There's that. a lot going on. There's California already is pretty progressive when it comes to employment law, but then L.A. has some of their own rules. Right. San Francisco has some of their own rules, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Etc. So Deep breath. Okay. So, so what do you got? The answer for us? that the, the the answer is always just know where your employee is and make sure you ask the question to us or your favorite employment lawyer. This is what I I think I know that this is what I'm going to do, but this is where the employee is. Is there anything I should know right. about? It's that simple, right? That's that's the solution. Okay. So first, before we get into those kind of big bucket topics, let's just talk about some random employment laws. Okay. Around the country, that all right. You got some fun ones. I I'm got some unique <laughs> ones. Should I say? I'm going to try to stump you. Okay. So all anyone right. that knows you knows that's extraordinarily difficult. Oh, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I did not show you my notes before. I know this nothing about because this. I, I wanted to see if to I could surprise you okay. on some things because I know you do a lot in the multi-state area. I do actually. Yeah. Okay, so here's some random employment laws. Okay, I'm ready. Did you know, Sarah, that in Maine? There is a video display terminal law. So in Maine, employers are required to provide training on how to set up an ergonomic workstation oh, to all employees who spend more than four hours a day sitting at a computer. Did you know I did right, not that is know required that. training in Maine? Okay. okay, so I got one. That was easy. <laughs> it was easier than I thought. In Iowa... In Iowa, employers must provide veterans with holiday time off for Veterans Day. It can be paid or unpaid, but they must provide time off for Veterans Day if the employee is a veteran. Interesting. I'm picturing the policy. I'm thinking Veterans Day might just be a holiday for all employees. I think that would be easier. In Iowa, but interesting and I've just got a lot of questions about how you confirm what somebody's veteran says. But anyway, well, okay. I, do you have questions? I do have some no. answers. I wasn't going to go through this level it's of okay. detail. But the way they define veteran is very, very specific. It has to be a certain number of years of service. It I has was to be with this thing that. or that okay. thing. And you can always Honorable ask for discharge, discharge information. Yeah, you yeah. can always ask for papers. Okay. May I see your papers? Yes. Right? <laughs> to have tomorrow off. You okay, can always it. do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, in New Jersey, they have a Cannabis Regulatory Commission, and it has issued rules that talk about uh, reasonable suspicion for okay. having someone I tested. I did know about this. You, there are reasons when you can test someone, but there are also times when you cannot test right. someone. We're not going to go in depth into that area here, but I do want our listeners to know that anything regarding cannabis, whether it be pre-employment testing, yes. post-employment testing... Termination for that's going to be very state specific. It's a patchwork. So always and, look. And I would add to don't make assumptions based on the state because you you yeah. would be surprised. I know, right? On the states that provide employee protection in that area, there are several states in the South, etc. So that really is something that agree. you need to know the law of the area in which the employee is working. Yeah. Or 
making an employment decision based on a positive marijuana result. Absolutely. That is one you should definitely check your state yes, laws every absolutely. time. Every time. Yep. So in New Jersey, if you have you have to have reasonable suspicion to test, and they have a reasonable suspicion observation report form. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's a mouthful, right? To document the behavioral, physical signs and evidence that support the employer's determination that an employee is reasonably suspected of being under the influence during the employee's prescribed hours. Okay, okay. so not anyway, so one of the items listed as behavioral indicators of oh, impairment. Boy. You know is this do you know this eating one? Cheetos? <laughs> No, but it should be. <laughs> what is Unexplained it? orange powder. <laughs> <laughs> On their fingers or around their <laughs> Yes, what is it? The inappropriate wearing of outerwear, including the inappropriate wearing of sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually listed in the rule. This is like a law, right? <laughs> the inappropriate, <laughs> which... I got you on that one. I'm dying about the expert opinion sought by the New Jersey legislature (laughs) to come up with these. The lawyers. Let me ask ask my uncle. He seems to know a lot about this. HR professionals now have to categorize the wearing of outerwear. By the way, other than sunglasses, I'm not really sure what outerwear (laughs) would be reasonable. Just get to the point. Just get to the point. point. You mean sunglasses. Right. But they say inappropriate wearing of outerwear. (laughs) So now HR people have to know when is it appropriate to wear sunglasses? When is it it inappropriate? Well, inside, probably never. Well, I think that's what they're getting at, but just come out and say it. (laughs) What about the old song about wearing my sunglasses at night? (laughs) That is a good one. Okay, but I do have have a... Serious observation on that. I will say I am, lots of employers everywhere are interested in um, having a better way to evaluate reasonable suspicion before they test. I've had that I'm interested in this form in New Jersey, <laughs> right? And whether yeah. that's a, that would be a resource for HR professionals to look at. Yeah. As they're putting together a reasonable suspicion or even, protocol that they yeah. want to use, because it appears the New Jersey legislature has thought a lot about this, <laughs> not just the form, but but the list. Yeah, because that's, that's what, what I we've mean. worked on over the years, right? That's what I mean. We say we, okay. and we've done episodes on this, yes. so I don't want to rehash the. Right, that was not an intended pun, but it was a pretty good one. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Stop myself. We don't want to. I'm going to do it again because I'm proud of myself. We don't want. <laughs> we don't want to re- rehash. <laughs> <laughs> Our old episodes right. on what whether you need reasonable suspicion in yeah. Michigan uh, to send for testing. If you do decide that's the standard you want right. to have, what is reasonable suspicion? Right. But that's always been kind of right, like we a struggle, yep. frankly, to give some parameters to employers right. around that. So, um, yeah, so the actual law might check help. Out, yeah, check out what New Jersey has done, and that might provide you some valuable yeah. information as you're putting together your. Leave it to you to turn a jokey thing into something that's actually helpful to our clients. So, okay, let's talk about something not as much fun for HR folks, but hang in there. We have more fun stuff, too. But let's turn to the serious. Okay. Uh, Paid sick leave. Oh, my gosh. State and local. So we can't even. We can't even. This is one where I had to stop the printing. Yeah. And not to go into my home life, but again, this was at home. And my husband was like, you got to stop. The <laughs> like, I think we just spent $500 on printer ink. Make it stop. We couldn't figure it out and actually had to unplug the printer. Okay. So I do not, <laughs> do not have the complete chart in front of me. Uh, but I have a, a pretty, pretty good one. Um, let's start off with, this is a state show, but let's start off with federal. There is no federal paid leave law. Yeah, it's always being debated. Correct. There is none yet. FMLA is unpaid. Let's just say that to level set. Yep. But many states and now many local municipalities are getting into it. Yes. Right? Much of my printing is due to California. (laughs) We're not going to go through all of these laws exhaustively. This is not a training session on each state's paid leave laws because- Just some examples. We'd be here 80 hours. Yes. But just some things that to be aware of. Because what I would like folks to take away from this, in addition to what we've already said, 
is if an employee in another state raises a question or says something like, I think I get this benefit, or I think I get this paid leave, or, you know, and you think you know you might not, right? Because all of these laws can be a little uh, right. squirrely. So in California, one of the quirks is paid uh, family leave can be for, or paid sick leave, can be to take care of, obviously, yourself or a family member, but also non-family members. Yeah. Whom you think of like family. Like your friend. Right, like a friend. Uh, so when an employee who is working remotely in California says, I need some time off to care for my friend who's recovering from surgery or whatever, and you might flip to, no, 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 I know the FMLA, right? I know other paid leave laws, maybe in other states, there's no way friend. So you just say no. I just, I would counsel everyone to just pause whenever they get a question from someone in another state. Because to me, I can see a lot of people flipping just automatically and saying, no, 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 friends can't possibly yeah, be part right, of a family right. paid from a, leave act. From a practical standpoint, the paid sick time requirements in the myriad of states across the board allow employers to use their available paid time off benefits. Mm -hmm. So really the most important thing is to make sure your paid time off policy, the time you're already giving to these employees, mm -hmm. is tailored to meet the specific requirements of each of those states, right? So for example, the what you just said in California um, would mean to me that employee is just saying, I want to use a PTO day to care for, <laughs> truly, right. yeah. to care for my friend. Mm -hmm. um, and that would probably be okay with the employer. We just need to make sure the policy is in line with that. Um, the other thing I'll say is most of those states also say that time then is protected. Yes. So, so no attendance points. No attendance points. Is that what you mean points. by that? Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's going to be making sure the requirements of each of those states is in line with their PTO policy and also having a way to separate those absences out then so that they don't count under the attendance policy. That's true in Michigan. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's not a new concept. I would say we should people should assume that in every situation. Yeah. If there is a requirement for paid leave, paid sick leave, that it should not, it should be considered protected time. Correct. As a, again, as a hack, yes. right? We shouldn't spend hours and hours yes. researching yes. it, yes. right? You should not ding. You can use your available benefit, but you, there is quite a bit of work to be done then if you have employees in other states to align it all. Yes. So um, my recommendation there is before saying no to request for paid leave or before terminating someone right. for attendance issues. In other states, when any single one of those attendance issues could have been due to the health, right. their own health or a family member's health, or in California, uh, a friend's right. health, you're gonna wanna check your state law, yep. right? And you check it out, making sure you're counting right. everything correctly, Yeah, right? There is no, let's just say this out loud, there is no exception in these states for, but. I live most of my time in Michigan. I only have one employee there. Right. I'm not an expert, right? It, that will never be an excuse. Yep, you got it. Okay, so um, also in California, <laughs> just just if you think you tell us, we ask where's the employee, you just say California. We look at California law and we say, oh, this person doesn't qualify for paid leave under California because there's certain types of, um, you know, you have to work so many hours, et cetera, et cetera, right? Well, don't worry because a lot of municipalities have also added their own paid leaves. Yes. So, for instance, Los Angeles, California, eligible employees are defined as well, the first one not covered by the California law. Right. <laughs> right. So, folks that are not covered, right, under the state's laws may then that are working very in Los specifically Angeles. be covered by municipal municipalities, large municipalities usually in this case. The one we're talking about now is LA. So if they are covered by Calif already covered by California's generous uh, paid leave law, they may be covered under LA's. Um, the next bullet item is they have to perform at least two hours of work a week. That's it. Yep. That's it. Paid leave. If you two hours yep. or more. That's wow. really... Uh, surprising. And you have to have 30 days 
of work in a year. Yep, that's it. That's it. That one, that was really surprising to me, just uh, which employees are covered. So there are some examples. That's a great example because I can easily see a business who has a PTO benefit, but Mm -hmm. it wouldn't be available to the person in L.A., and the business probably has no idea that they are not in compliance with that. Right. And how do you know if your business is somewhere else and that the employee maybe remotes in? Right. From LA, right. right? Remote work is very is obviously very big in places like California, where it's hard to get around. Right, it just takes forever. So, yep. a lot more popular. Okay, before we switch to asking about wage histories, let's do some more fun state laws. It well, fun is defined by me. <laughs> um, in Virginia, it is illegal to use profane indecent or threatening language on the phone, including text messages. Really, Virginia? I can never go to Virginia. (laughs) And to think I lived there. Everyone's a criminal. (laughs) I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's unconstitutional. (laughs) I think that might violate free speech. What do you think? I'm pretty sure that's what they got. I can't believe I can't believe that still that hasn't been challenged and still on the books. They Profane, might. They must not. Indecent. I mean, I'm or no threatening. Fucking, look, as I said, I, I'm no constitution specialist, but <laughs> that violates freedom of speech. How did dating apps work? Yeah. <laughs> yes. In Virginia. Anyway. Let's just leave it there. Yeah. So um, funny, but you know, if you have a, a harassment issue or something like that in Virginia, that's interesting. See, I can find an employment related thing here. Sure. That's an interesting connection, right? Yeah. Yeah. We can get yeah. them on illegal uh, behavior. All right. In Indiana, all water or pop sold in a liquor store must be room temperature. So if you are hot and thirsty in Indiana and just want some cold water, you can't. Don't go to a liquor store. Don't go to a liquor store. I. How do they define I, a liquor store? Is it a store that also sells liquor? It must be. So like gas station convenience store? I didn't research I'm it, but positive. I'm guessing a liquor store sells liquor. I'm po- <laughs> yes. I will say this. I'm positive in my frequent drives through the state of Indiana. I'm positive I've gotten a cold water from, <laughs> from a where? gas station that also sells liquor. But a lot of gas stations don't aren't allowed to sell liquor. Did you know that? Like, I'm going to be watching. There's for a this lot now. of. That, that, I'm going to be watching. We're for not going to go through it here, but states are very, very particular. Yeah. But who can sell liquor? And they separate liquor from beer and wine sales. So gas stations in Michigan can sell beer and wine, but not liquor. Why I don't know. Uh, but there's a lot of. Okay. There's a lot of that. Yeah. I'm going to test that. I'm going to be <laughs> testing that in my travels through Indiana. I want to find a oh. liquor store that's. Willing to sell me a cold water. Sounds like a fun road trip in the Willie family. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let you do that with the kids and I'll get the report back. <laughs> okay. <That's good. laughs> There's more on that coming, more fun stuff coming. But for now, let's switch to wage histories. Yes. This has been a this hot is really an issue. emerging issue. Really. If, if you don't have a state law on this yet in whatever state you need to know about, it's probably coming. Right? Uh, Or it's probably being debated. Well, and this is an important one because it has to do with something that many businesses might not think about, and that's using an employment application, the same application, regardless of where the person is applying. Exactly. Okay? So it is really... You may have an employment application... And yeah. that and may allow somebody to apply from any state in the country. And if that's the case, you need to be careful about what you have on the application. Because mm-hmm. there's lots and lots of state laws out there. You and this may the just want to take one. that question off. I see a lot of these applications. They're like a dime a dozen. And it's there's a box, you know, for work history. And it's your last three. And it's years and title. Yeah, and, just and at the, the, land, the end, it says wage rate or yeah. something like that. And sometimes starting, ending. Just take it right? off. Right, just take it off. Yeah. It's prohibited in many states now. It's also a really good opportunity for manager training and updating, right? Because yeah. I because la- HR might know this, but right. they're not in a lot of the interviews, yep. right? And in the conversations. And that is 
goodness gracious, a very common question. Yep. Right. Well, That's what right. did you earn there? What did you earn? Right. Yeah. Some of our listeners may be wondering what's what's the problem with wage history. Yeah. Right? Why is this a hot why does issue it matter right, right now? And the idea is that um, because we have a wage gap now yeah. between certain protected classes, men and women being primary example, but that's not mm-hmm. the only protected class in which we see wage gaps. The idea is that if we're then basing a starting wage at a new job on what they've been historically making, it perpetuates that wage gap. Exactly. So that's why many states are saying, pay the person what's appropriate and in line with what your organization would pay for the position, not based on their historical wages elsewhere. That is a very succinct and excellent explanation with absolutely no warning or preparation. (laughs) (laughs) I can really talk. Are you a lawyer? Crap off the top of my head. Are you a lawyer? Oh, wait, you are. All right. So so let's talk about Connecticut. We can talk about, frankly, there's lots and lots of states that have rules like this, but I'm just Connecticut, just as an example, randomly as an example. The first thing to know is that when we talk about asking, but they almost all talk about when you can ask for wage history yes. and when you can't. State laws dis- define what a wage is very differently. So does it include commission structure, for right. instance? Does it include bonus structure? Does it include all of those things? So you have to uh, think about that. In Connecticut, you cannot inquire about a prospective employee's wage or salary history. Those are... Okay. Separate, and you cannot direct a third party to make an inquiry. Oh, interesting. So think about, this is why I like Connecticut as an example. Think about your hiring services, your temp agencies, your recruiters. Yeah. Right? We all use those. I mean, we use them. Yeah. They almost always say what the candidate earned or is earning. Right. At their current place, right? You cannot have them do it either, right? There are key exceptions for almost all of them, almost all the states that I have familiarity with. They almost always make an exception if someone voluntarily discloses. So they're not asked and it's not a required, but if they say, because they might have a salary demand. That's right. Right? They might say, look, I'm making 50,000 here, so I'm not going to come over. Right. Unless I'm making at least 55 for you, right? Yeah. That would be an example of yeah. a, a voluntary disclosure. That would be okay. And then you can take that into um, account, right? In Connecticut, you can inquire about other elements of a prospective employee's compensation structure, such as commission structure and sales, as long as you don't ask for the value of those other elements. So you can ask about the commission structure. Uh-huh. What is the... Um, what is the percent of variable, non-variable in your compensation, for right. instance, right? But you can't ask, and what, did what you actually was get your yeah. salary, right? Or commission. And yeah, commission, yeah. right, or set, right? You can't ask for the actual amounts, yeah. right? You can just ask for the structure. And every, Larry, I, I, you, you need to look at this um, in every state. I would, I'd same recommend, just take it off the application, tell your managers and supervisors not to ask. Something else that's related to this is wage range uh, notices in your postings. postings. Yes, you have to say Many states, again, very state by state, many states require you to post the wage range of the position. Yep. In the posting. If you're advertising or posting a position, you have to. Yes. In some states, in many states, you have to. Don't we all almost always use Indeed or LinkedIn or other things? Those are... um, Right. So, yeah. so you may want to get in the habit of choosing the lowest common denominator, which is doing it right, even though it's not required right. in the state you're at. That way, you don't have to worry about getting nabbed so on those sort of things. Yeah. If I was a plaintiff's lawyer in one of those states that prohibited, it'd be like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. Right. I just go on Indeed, yeah. <laughs> and I'd find all the ones that didn't have the postings, yeah. and then I'd sure. do a class action and and make a lot of money. Okay. Another, well, we're, I'll just say one thing. Yes, please. On employment applications, another hot thing is inquiries about criminal background. Oh, that yes. varies across states too. So if yes. you have that question on an application and anybody is filling it out outside yep. of, it might have been vetted for Michigan law, for example, yep. but if you've got anybody applying from other states, you really need to have somebody take a look at that. Yes. Yes. It's that's all it. over the place. The, what you the, can, Whether you can ask at all, 
yeah. you can ask what you what you can ask specifically. You so. might want to just consider taking it off completely. Just again, mm-hmm. lowest common denominator yeah. if you're a person that advertises. If the goal is to be, yeah. Yep, yep. And, and, and footnote there, because I get a question on this every time we mention that. You, depending on your state laws, but in many cases, you can still consider criminal background when making the ultimate hiring decision, right? Yeah. Or you can make, in some states, make a conditional offer and then get the criminal background, right? right? And revoke if there is something yes. that's concerning and job related. It doesn't mean you can't ever learn that information, but it. A lot of states don't let you put it on the job on the application. application to screen people out yep. automatically on yep. the front you end. Got it. Okay, let's talk about some other state laws that you might not have known about. In Massachusetts, remixing the national anthem <laughs> is unlawful. <laughs> I know that was another one of your I've weekend activities heard, coming I've up. I've never right? heard a remix of the national anthem, but I'm glad to hear they are ahead of that. So it all the they are ahead of that. Every once in a while, there's a kerfuffle, right, at a major sporting event. Not in Massachusetts. Now I know why it's never in Massachusetts. But every once in a while, everyone knows what I'm talking about. There's a kerfuffle, right, with yeah. a major pop star or someone, right, musical artist, yeah. doing the national anthem. Yes. Remixing it, their word, in a way of that offends they are some ahead people. Of it. They are ahead of it. Yeah. Uh, this is also going to kill your weekend. In New Hampshire, you cannot collect seaweed at night. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it during the day. I just. But at night, why, Sarah? I don't know. Well, why? that's what I was going to say. Behind every law is a story. <laughs> yes. Yes. Really. And I firmly believe that. And I just will be spending. Yeah. I'll be spending the next few days trying to (laughs) think about what the story might be behind that. This is, um, Vermont has one of my favorites. We could go on and on with this stuff, but Vermont has one of my favorites as a child that grew up in a home where all laundry was dried outside. Oh boy. And now in a lot of areas, it's prohibited, right? Closed lines. Yes, because it's unattractive, whatnot. So in Vermont, (laughs) they're very pro-renewable energy. Yes. And they have laws that relate to that. Do they protect the hanging of laundry on the line? Is it defined as (laughs) an energy device based on renewable resources. (laughs) So in Vermont, you are protected. You get energy credit in your, your... protected for <laughs> hanging your clothes you out. You can on. hang your clothes out on it's your, your clothes right. line because it's, it a, your right it's a renewable uh-huh. resource, All right, cool. essentially. So go hang those towels out. Go hang your undies out on the line and see if anyone complains. If they do, it's yeah. your right. <laughs> it's my right to renewable energy source, the sun and the air. <laughs> All right, that's actually okay. not funny. But anyway, Vermont makes me laugh always. And California. All right, well, this was awesome. Uh, takeaways are know where your employee is before making any employment yes. related decision and in policies and job applications, contracts, things like that. Yep. Think about modifying for the lowest common denominator. If you cannot control where people are right. when they see them or sign them. Right. Right. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for the laughs. It was fun. It was. <laughs> <laughs>